من التزم السلفية حصل الخير كله وحصل أجرا عظيما وفيرا كبيرا لأنه لزم هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحد لله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشار الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار وبعد Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen In continuing with our lessons of the benefits from the lives of the, the prophets and the messengers the best of creation that was sent to mankind to guide them to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to keep them away from the the most horrible of crime the crime of shirk associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're still continuing with that lesson alhamdulillah on the 18th of jamadul thani in the year 1443 al-hijr corresponding to the 18th of december year 2021 welcome the dear brothers and sisters again for this and we're still continuing with some of the benefits from the life of isa alayhi salam there is one major factor with the life of Isa alayhi salam, this great beautiful prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, messenger who worshipped Allah with certainty and knowledge and yaqeen and sidq and amana. This great prophet Isa alayhi salam and this great matter which is an uh, uh, an aspect of aqeedah is an aspect of belief that the Muslim must have, which is that Isa salam will descend again. Isa salam is living and he hasn't died yet. And he will descend again to the earth and will rule over the people. So this is a belief that the Muslim has. An aqidah that the Muslim has. Shows us the great status of Isa alayhi salam to the Muslims. The great status of Isa alayhi salam to the Muslims. That they love and they have a great concern with Isa alayhi salam that he will descend again on the earth and this has been mentioned very clearly by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he will descend again and it's been mentioned in the Quran that he hasn't died and he's alive and that he will descend again so he will come as a sign for the closeness of the final hour, the day of resurrection, the day of judgment. He will come and that will be a sign for the believers that this is close to the final hour. He will come after the, the khuruj of the Dajjal, that the Dajjal will exit and come out and cause ifsad fil ard. He will cause chaos and corruption on the earth and Allah will send Isa alayhi salam and this will be a great corruption that uh, the Jah will cause and in these matters it is so important and necessary to go back to the scholars of Islam to ask them because sometimes we see 
in the societies that we live in, a lot of, a lot of facade and chaos and people turning away from the deen and people being weak in iman. But we don't judge for ourselves and say this is the worst of times. We can say generally that, you know, signs of the hour are close and these type of things. But to say this is the worst of the times, we don't have that knowledge. And we go back to our scholars to ask them, is it true that this is the, the, the worst of times that the Muslims are facing? Because they are the ones, the scholars, that gathering all the knowledge of the Kitab and the Sunnah, the knowledge of history and the history of Islam. And they're the ones that give this verdict, not us. Because we think we see corruption and chaos. We think that that's it. This is the time of the Jal, like some of the, the Sufis and the extremists they've gone to. They say, this is, and they used to say this, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that this is the time of the Dajjal. This is the worst times. 30 years have passed but no sign of the jal. So we have to be careful because m many a people have been gone astray and become misled due to having this uh, understanding that they derive for themselves, thinking that this is the worst of times. So the jal will come. And as is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, We'll read this hadith now, even though I wanted to read it later. Is the hadith of Nawas ibn Sam'an. And it's a long hadith in Bukhari. It's a long hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Prophet sallallahu made a mention of the Dajjal one day in the morning. And he, he sallallahu alayhi wa sometimes described him to be insignificant and sometimes described his turmoil as very significant. And then the Prophet and then the hadith goes on later. It's a very long hadith. And the Prophet mentioned that Allah will send down Al Masih, yani Isa alayhi salam, Ibn Maryam, and he will descend at the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus. So this was this description that the Prophet gave of Isa alayhi salam, very precise. Very precise. Okay. That he would descend at the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus, Syria, wearing two garments, lightly dyed with saffron. So two garments, a top piece and a lower piece maybe, Allah knows best. Two garments, lightly dyed with saffron, and placing his hands on the wings of two angels. Subhanallah. That is definitely a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he continues. When he would lower his head, there would fall beads of perspiration from his head. And when he would raise it up, beads like pearls would scatter from it. Subhanallah. This is Isa alayhi salam, this beautiful prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is not God, neither is he the son of God, neither is he divine, rather he is a human whom Allah had chosen like the other prophets the best of creation and they were prophets they were messengers and he will descend back to the earth to die like all living things then the hadith continues every non-believer who would smell the odor of of isa -Islam would die and his breath would reach as far as he would be able to see he would then search for the jal and Isa alayhi salam, until he would catch a hold of him at the gate of Lud and would kill him. The hadith continues, then a people whom Allah had protected would come to Isa ibn Maryam and he would wipe their faces and would inform them of their ranks in paradise. And the hadith continues with more detail. The shahid that we're looking at is the, dis the, the descent of Isa alayhi salam, that he will descend again. Ibn Kathir, rahimullah, mentions in uh, Bidai wa Nihaya, his very famous book, 
very famous book of, of his collection of um, the history of Islam. The history of Islam, he mentions this uh, regarding this point of the Jal coming to the white minarets of uh, eastern Damascus, Sham. He said, this is the most uh, well-known place where he will be, he will descend. These white minarets of, in Damascus. He said, I've seen in some books that it mentions that he will descend upon the minarets of the eastern Damascus in the the great masjid of Damascus. And he said, perhaps this is what is being yani, mentioned because he said that in Damascus, there is no minaret which is on the eastern side except to next door to Jami al Umawiyah in D Damascus from the eastern side. It's a very famous masjid, a very large masjid which has been mentioned. Jamia al Umawiyah, which is there to, till today. And the Sheikh says that, and Ibn Kathir, half of the Ibn Kathir mentions that seems to be the most appropriate or the thing that it's been mentioned. He said also, it's mentioned that when he will, will uh, when he will come down, Yani al Masih, Sabin Maryam, when he will come down, and this has been mentioned in the hadith. That when he will come down, that he were, the prayer would be established, I and mean, the people will be praying. And the Imam of the Muslims at that time, who's leading the prayer, will say, Ya Ruh Allah, O Spirit of Allah, to cut them, I mean, go forward and lead the prayer. And he will say, Isa alayhi salam, to cut them, Anta, I mean, you lead the prayer. Because it has been established for you to lead the prayer. And in another narration, he mentions that some of you are put over others as leaders. And this is a, the, and then the hadith mentions, uh, as a um, in Sahih Muslim, that this is an honor for the, uh, the, uh, from Allah for this ummah, for the ummah of the Muslims. Another thing that is being mentioned in uh, Bidai wa Nahaya as well, by Ibn Kathir as a side point, that in the year 741, in the year 741, the Muslims replaced that mina, mina, the minara, the minaret, they replaced it with white stone. And it was built from the wealth of the Christians who had burnt down the minaret before. And th this is perhaps from the signs of prophethood, declared the la ilaha uh, uh, nabuwa, prophet, uh, signs of prophethood, clear signs of prophethood. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such that it was built from the, this minaret was built from the wealth of the Christians. So that Isa alayhi salam would descend there and that he will kill the pigs and destroy the, uh, destroy the, break the cross. He will break the cross and some other matters as well. So this is a, a, a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is uh, uh, an introduction to that Isa alayhi salam will descend. They will come down again. And this is very important because this is something in the future. And this is something that we believe and we trust because we believe in the hadith and the ayat of Allah Azza wa Jal. We have yaqeen, certainty in that. So if we look at some of the evidences of the descent of Isa alayhi salam. We look in the Quran, we find that there's a verse in the Quran in Surah Zukhraf, Ayah 61. There's a 
a few ayat which talk about Isa alayhi salam him being Allah bringing him in as an example him and his mother as an example for the people and you know some other points and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions wa innahu li ilmun lisa and Isa ibn Maryam will be a known sign of the coming of the final hour so when Isa alayhi salam descends it will be a clear sign of the final hour final hour and this came at the end of this, this, these statements. That's a sign of the closeness of the hour. And this has also been narrated by Imam Ahmad, collected by Imam Ahmad with the son of Ibn Abbas in his tafsir, in his tafsir, about this ayah, he said, Okay, so we find from this uh, Statement of Ibn Abbas, which has been authenticated by Ahmed Shakir, he said it's Isnad is Sahih, he's one of the great scholars of Hadith, Ahmed Shakir, he said it is Sahih, that who Khuruj Isa alayhi salam. And this has also been mentioned by many other scholars as well. From the evidences also, is what has been mentioned by Ibn Jarir, collected by Ibn Jarir from Ibn Abbas, another evidence, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن مِنْ أَخْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لِيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبَلَ مَوْتِهِ That indeed there will be, and in from the, sorry, and from the أَحْلُ الْكِتَابِ except that there will be from the, some from the أَحْلُ الْكِتَابِ except that they will believe in him قَبَلَ مَوْتِهِ before he dies. And Ibn Abbas says, Qabal al-Mawt Isa ibn Maryam, that before he dies. So we know that he will descend. He will descend down onto the earth, live on the earth, and then he will die. And this has been mentioned in the Quran. Qala ibn Kathir, wa hadha isnadun sahih. Yeah, he mentions this isnad is sahih. And, and also been narrated by Hassan al-Basri who said, Qabal al-Mawt Isa, wallahu, Wallahi innahu al-an hayyun in the Allah. So Hassan al-Basir said, this is before the death of Musa Isa al-Islam will die. And I swear by Allah that he is alive with Allah. However, idha nazala amunu bihi ajma'in. And that when he, uh, when he descends, everybody will uh, believe in him. Believe in him. So Ibn Kathir goes on to talk about this in his tafsir. He says, there is no doubt that what uh, Ibn Jarir said before, like Ibn Jarir mentioned this statement of Ibn Abbas, is sahih. Because this is the, the intent, the meaning of the context of this ayah. To show the, the n to negate what the Yahud claim of that they killed Isa alayhi salam and they crucified him. And the same, uh, and, and, to, and to what the, the Christians the ignorant Christians accepted of this statement, accepted this statement of the Jews. They accepted this statement and they uh, they uh, believed in it, accepted and believed in it that you know, that the Jews uh, that they had killed Isa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa taala informs us that this is not the case. Rather, there was a doubt amongst them. Somebody was put in his place. Somebody was put in his place and that person was killed. And they did not pay attention to this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up to himself. And he, he remains alive. And he will descend before the day of judgment. As has been indicated, is shown by the hadith of Mutawatir. The reoccurring chains of these hadith, reoccurring hadith. So Ibn Kathir mentions this about Isa alayhi salam. And this is a very important point because it, one, it shows us the status of Isa alayhi salam. It shows us how much we have respect for Isa alayhi salam and that we believe that he will descend again. Likewise, from the evidences of the Quran, oh sorry, from the Sunnah, Evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is that Isa will come. 
Abi Huraira radli anhu, who said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Walladhi nafsi biyadi, I swear by him in whose hand is my soul. Lo yushukanna an yanzil fikum ibn Maryam, hakaman adalan. Yani, uh, he said, I swear by him in whose hands is my soul, that uh, Isa ibn Maryam is about to descend. Yani, whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to use these type of phrases and these type of statements, meaning how close the Day of Judgment will be. And we can see this in our lives. So we find that in a blink of an eye, we were, we were a ch uh, uh, young and children, and all of a sudden we've grown up and become adults. And all of a sudden our life is in, in rushing past us. Rushing past us. So quick. We can see that nowadays when we say, oh, hang on. They say, a week has gone already. That's quick. Life like that. So the Prophet Sallallahu used to mention these, uh, these statements to show us that life is, span is very short. Very short. It'll be over in blink of an eye. So, that Isa is about to descend upon you as a just ruler. That he will break the cross. He will kill the pigs. That he will uh, 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 begin a war. Where you feed the mal, and that he will uh, have lots. He will spread out lots of wealth. They will. Everybody will be so rich and so wealthy and everything that they will. Nobody will need wealth. That even one sajda is better than the, everything in the dunya. And everything, uh, 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 what is in it. One sajda is better than uh, everything in the dunya and everything in it. Because at that time, Allah's blessings will be so much that there will be plentiful rain, produce, all these matters. All these matters will be plentiful. There will be plentiful. There will be everywhere. So then Abu Huraira Radan who says, and read if you want that uh, there are some from the Ahlul Kitab, except they will not, that neither will be some from the Ahlul Kitab, except that they will definitely believe in him before he dies. On, uh, 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 and on the day of judgment, he will be a witness against them. He will be a witness against them. And this is the tafsir from Abu Huraira for this ayah. And then the meaning is that they, from the Ahlul Qadab, who will there will be some who will believe in Isa al before he dies. And this will be when he descends at the end of time. And the hadith regarding uh, Isa alayhi salam descending are very many, are very many. There's quite a few hadith that would uh, uh, mention about, okay, about Isa alayhi salam descending. Now, the reason why we're mentioning is this because why we're talking about this issue is because it is a matter of the unseen, it is a matter of aqidah, belief, to have correct belief, because we believe in what Allah said and we believe in what. The same belief as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Sahaba and the Salaf, what they used to believe in. Because there are people who reject this. They reject the, that Isa salam, will descend again. Isa salam, will descend again. He will come again onto the earth. And the people say, oh, you believe in fairy stories and dreams and you know, speculation and everything. No. We know this to be the truth. We know this to be the truth and we believe it and we accept it. Sheikh Ahmed Shaki, one of the great scholars of Hadith, from the early times of, like, say, uh, um, from, uh, in this century, in this century, he was around before Sheikh Al-Albani, 
and Sheikh Al Albani met him as well. So we're talking about, say, from now, we're talking about, say, about 100 years ago, approximately, or less than that. Sorry, less than 100 years ago. But say, like, about 50, 60 years ago. Can't remember approximately, uh, exactly, but approximately about 50, 60 years ago, uh, maybe more. Anyway, he was a great scholar of hadith. He did many checkings of uh, books and he did the checking of Tafsir al Tabri as well and, and other books in Muslim Ahmad and a great scholar. He was a great scholar, Ahmad Shaki. Anyway, he said, uh, as regards the descent of uh, Isa alayhi salam and the final hour at the end of time, there is no difference amongst the Muslims regarding that. He's talking about the scholars due to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the authentic narrations being present from the Prophet Bidalik regarding this issue. And this is well known, he says, Ma'alum min ad-din bidhurura. This is known as a necessity from, from the room. It's known, uh, it's a necessity that is known from the religion. Okay, it's known from the room. And then, uh, those who reject it, they don't believe in this. They, who, those who reject this do not believe in this. Shaykh al-Albani, he said, know that the hadith of the Dajjal Knowledge, a'lam anna ahadith al-Dajjal wa nuzul Isa alayhi salam mutawatira. Mutawatira. You know, in Islam, especially in the science of hadith, we have this aspect, we probably mentioned it before, as a benefit, there's a hadith which are ahad and there's a hadith which are mutawatir. A hadith ahad means that there was singular uh, chains of transmission. That perhaps... Only one companion heard the Prophet say this. He conveyed it to one person and he conveyed it to one person. And then Imam Bukhari or Imam Muslim or, or the scholars collected that hadith. So the chain of transmission is singular. Or maybe two people heard it and they conveyed it to two people and they conveyed it to two people like this. Even though that is the case, still, as long as those people... Uh, fulfill the category of being truthful and trustworthy and reliant upon their memory, their chains of transmission are accepted, especially when you're dealing with you know, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, those who had good strong memory and the Tabi'een, the good strong memory, they conveyed it as it was, uh, they, uh, as they heard it. And then uh, scholars came along and collected this thing. Mutawatir means that the Prophet ﷺ maybe said something and there were a, a large amount of people who heard it. Maybe it was in a khutbah, maybe it was in a big gathering. Large people, amount of people heard it. And that large amount conveyed it to another large amount. And they conveyed it to another large amount and came down. So it's not a possibility of it being a lie or being false. Rather, it's true. However, in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the sciences that the scholars of hadith and the scholars of Islam collected, that hadith are hard, are also, uh, are also authentic. They're also authentic. They're accepted. This is some philosophy that the people who believed in philosophy, they came with this. They said, if it's only one person, one narrative to one person, he goes, they say it's a, there's a possibility that it could be that they gathered upon a lie against the Prophet. This is not true. This is not true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to protect his religion. Promised to protect his religion. So we believe and accept a hadith which are ahad. And it could be perhaps that only Aisha Radhan heard from the Prophet Sallallahu And Aisha only conveyed it to one person. And, but we, they, are, they are the best of people and the most trustworthy of them, and the strongest in memory. And scholars later on came along and did many works in gathering other chains of narrations for the hadith to strengthen the, uh, the hadith which people thought were hard and brought them in, in, in supporting narrations. In most cases, it's usually not singular, yani one transmission alone, rather two, three, two, three. This is regarded as hard. And we find that these people who delve into philosophy and ilm al-kalam and rhetoric and debating and argumentation and doubts, they're the ones that fall into this. As for the Sunni Salafi, 
the people of uh, hadith, they don't fall into this. Because when they get an authentic narration, and it's been uh, graded authentic by the scholars, even if it's hadith ahad, they accept it and they take it. And that's why Imam Bukhari, rahimullah, in the first hadith of uh, Sayyid al-Bukhari, uh, the first hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْنِيَاتِ and indeed actions by our intentions is a hadith which is a had and later on in the chain it becomes yani mutawatir yani reoccurring or many narrations but the hadith in itself is a had yani in the chain of transmission because it's a belief in class sincerity it's an action of the heart actions are but by intentions and the last hadith in Sayyid al-Bukhari uh, the one that we mentioned about, say, Subhanallah, wa biham, uh, yani, kalimatani, khafifatani, ala lisan. There's two words which are light on the tongue and heavy on the scales. And the Prophet mentioned some other uh, descriptions. And he says, Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi. And uh, uh, Imam Bukhari used this hadith at the beginning, a hadith ahad, in al Manu bin Niyad, actions about divine intentions. And uh, this one about subhanallah wa bihamdi at the end to show that you have an intention, uh, a belief, and then you have actions. And this was a proof to show that hadith ahad are accepted. Hadith ahad are accepted. So this is just a point that we wanted to mention, mention this, discuss this point, because this issue of Isa al-Islam is mutawatir. It's reoccurring, changed, so many narrations that mention that Isa al-Islam will descend. How can the people uh, um, rejected. So Sheikh Al-Albani said, "Eilam anna ahadi ahadith the the jal when Nuzul Isa al-Islam mutawatir that the hadith about the jal and the descent of Isa al-Islam is mutawatir. Yajib al imanu biha. It is obligatory, wajib to have iman about this. Wala taqtaru bi man yadai fiha anna hadith ahad. And don't be deceived by those who claim." That in about this, the hadith ahad, singular narration, and it open to be, uh, to doubt and a lie. فَإِنَّهُمْ جُحَالَ بِهَذَا النَّلْ بِهَذَا الْعِلْمِ Because indeed they are ignorant. They are uh, ignorant, ignorant people of this knowledge. They are ignorant of this knowledge. جُحَالَ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ وَلَيْسَ فِيهِمْ مَنْ تَتَّبِعَ and not from amongst them are those who follow up the chains of narrations. Well, Fa'ala, where if they did ever do that, if they followed up and gathered the chains of narrations, they would find that it is mutawatir, yeah, reoccurring, lots of chains, lots of chains of hadith. Kama shahida bidalik aimatahadan el. As the uh, the imams of this knowledge testified to and witnessed to, like Hafiz ibn Hajar. Then he says, the Sheikh says, he says, and it's with great regret, really, truly, he said, it's with great reg regret that some of those who, those who try, uh, uh, those who, uh, Go against, oh, what's the word? There's a word. They go against this speech, which is, uh, they go against this speech, which is not from their uh, uh, spe specialization, especially since the, the matter is of deen and aqidah. This issue is a matter of deen, religion, and aqidah. And these people delve into something which is not their speciality. They're not speciality of gathering the narrations of the hadith these type of things and they start speaking about this and they have no knowledge of this and this matter of Isa al -Islam descending has been mentioned by a, a, many scholars as regards the aqid of Ahlul Sunnah and that he will come down to kill the Dajjal Imam Ahmad rahimullah, mentions Ahmad ibn Hanbal the Imam al Sunnah he said Asulu sunna indana at the masuku bi makana alehi ashaba ashaba rasuli lahi sa rasalam. Walek tida bihim. Watark al bida. Wakulu bida fahia dalala. And this is a beautiful statement. A statement that is worth its weight in diamonds. Its weight 
is worth its weight in diamonds. Asulu uh, Sunnah Indana, the principle, the foundation of the Sunnah to us. It is holding on to that which the companions of the Messenger were upon. And hold and, and following them. Yani leaving off bid'a, keeping away from bid'a. Because every bid'a and invasion is misguidance. Then he goes on to mention uh, uh, some uh, a number of uh, uh, beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah. Then he says, Imam Ahmed said, Wal Imanu an al Dajjal, and having Iman that the Messiah Dajjal, Kharijun, that this Dajjal will come, Kharijun, Maktubun Baina Ainehi Kafir, he will have the word uh, Kafir printed or written on, on his forehead, between his eyes. And, and, and between his eyes on, on his forehead. Well, a hadith fihi, and there are many hadith which mention that about this. Well, Iman be nun, and having Iman in this that it will occur. Wa Isa yanzil, that Isa alayhi salam will descend for yaqtuluhu bi baba lud, that Isa alayhi salam will kill him, yani will kill uh, the Dajjal at the Bab al-Lud. The next thing we want to look at is some of these points of the wisdom of Isa alayhi salam descending. The wisdom of Isa alayhi salam descending. And that is one Okay, that, this is something which has been gathered by the scholars. So we've been mentioning it just to briefly. That there is a this is a refutation against the Yahud, the Jews, in that they claim that they killed Isa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed their lie. And that they did not kill him, and rather he will come and kill the 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 the, the Jal. And secondly, that Isa alayhi salam mentioned or mentioned in the Injil or, or that uh, the, the, the presence of Isa alayhi salam will be a sign of what was mentioned truthfully in, in the Injil, the, 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 the Bible, about the excellence of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa About the excellence of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Imam Malik, rahimullah, said a very nice statement. He said, it has reached me that the Christians, that when the Christians used to see the companions, the companions who uh, conquered Sham, they used to say, He said, they used to say that these are better than the Hawariyun, the, the, the disciples or the companions of Isa alayhi salam, as is what has been narrated to us. So they knew. They knew the, the, the signs of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and his companions. They knew their uh, appearances. They knew what they would look like or how, the, the, what, how they would be. Ibn Kathir, Ibn, uh, Ibn, uh, Ibn Kathir said, and they were truthful in this, yeah, that they, what, what the Christians said. فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ that this Ummah, the Ummah of the Muslims, uh, was regarded as great in their books and in the information that the, they had present. Uh, it was mentioned in that. And he said, uh, 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 Imam al Zahabi, rahimullah, one of the great scholars of Islam, or the students of Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah, he said in his book, Tajrid al Asma Sahaba in the names of the uh, companions. So there were scholars that what they used to do was collect, make collections of the names of the companions, uh, his biographies of the companions and the Tabi'in and stuff like that. So in one of his books, he says, Isa ibn Maria, Maryam alayhi, Prophet sallallahu went up to the heavens. He saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi, and he, Gave salams to him. 
And he will be the last of the companions that will die. A beautiful benefit, mashallah, tabarakallah, that and he regarded Isa alayhi salam as a companion of the Prophet. Another reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, from the wisdom of Allah sending Isa alayhi salam, is that, that the day of judgment will come close. And that he, his time will come close as well, yani, and he will be buried on the earth. Because there is no nothing of the creation except that they will die. Okay? And that he will come at the time when the Dajjal will come. And then Isa alayhi salam will kill him. Another point, number four. That he will come down to belie what the Christians said. And show the weakness of their falsehood and that he will destroy uh, break the cross he will kill the pigs and he will place the jizya he will place the tax that people have to pay number five that this is this is something which the prophet mentioned about uh uh that he is the first one of the people with isa alayhi salam there was not between me and him a prophet. There was no prophet between me and him. And also that, you know, the examples of... Uh, another thing we're going to look at is what will Isa alayhi salam, when he comes, when he will kill the Dajjal and rule, what will he rule with? What will be his... Uh, Rule, uh, what will with, with, with which Sharia will he rule with? And for this, we have a hadith. And for this, we will know that we know that uh, Isa alayhi salam will give the uh, a rule with the Sharia of Muhammadiyya, the Prophet, وسلم, because he will be from the Prophet's uh, followers of Muhammad, وسلم, and he will not bring a new Sharia, not a new deen, because deen al Islam. Is Khatam al Adyan. It is the seal of all the religions. And it will remain to the day of judgment. And it will not be abrogated. So uh, Isa alayhi salam will be a ruler with these ahkam of this ummah. And he will be a reviver for the matter of this deen because there is no prophet after Muhammad. Sallam. Imam Muslim rahimullah, mentions from Abu Huraira radhanhu. That the Prophet ﷺ said, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نُزِّلَ فِيكُمْ إِذَا نُزِّلَ فِيكُمْ إِبْنُ مَرْيَمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ how will, be the, how will the situation be when Isa a.s. comes down and uh, comes to, uh, comes to, uh, descends and your leader will be amongst you? And this has been mentioned, this, 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 this next narration has been mentioned about this, this hadith uh, and Walid ibn Muslim Walid ibn Muslim al Qurishi, uh, he said uh, from another narration about this hadith, with Imam Minkum, he said, uh, Do you know? He was talking to Ibn Abi Dhib. He said to him, Do you know? Okay. And he was a great Imam, Thika. He goes, Do you know what this uh, means? Huh? He goes, Inform me. Uh, here, when uh, when the Prophet ﷺ said, "How will you be your situation when Isa alayhi salam defends amongst you? What imamukum minkum? What imamukum minkum? Yani your leader, or your thing, your leadership will be there." Yeah, he said. The meaning is, "Fa'amukum bi kitab Rabbikum tabarik wa taala wa sunnat nabiyyukum sallallahu alaihi wasallam." That he will lead. The meaning of this hadith means. Imamukum minkum, yani your leadership will be there, meaning that he will govern, he will lead with the book of your Lord and the Sunnah of your Prophet. So he will lead by, with that. He will give hukum and verdicts and rule with the ruling of the Sharia. Then at, at the end of this point, we would like to mention that Isa alayhi salam, uh, as has been mentioned in some narrations, that Isa alayhi salam will uh, rule for 40 years, as is mentioned in some narrations, and some mentions seven and mentions others, and that then he will die, 
and the Muslims will prey upon you. Muslims prey upon you. The Muslims will prey upon you. Allah knows best uh, the time and the place that this will occur of him passing away and how long he will rule for. Allah knows best. And with that, we've come to the end of today's lesson and to the end of the story of Isa alayhi salam or the benefits from the story of Isa alayhi salam. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Anta astaghfiruka wa tubu alayku sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad.